Come on, before you see it, turn around to two or three people around you and say, he won't fail. Come on, tell them online, I want to tell you, he won't fail. I want to welcome those online. Thank you for joining us today. So glad that you're logged in. You're part of our family. So give a shout out to the online host. Let us know where you're from today. We're so glad that you have logged in for Church Online. And I pray that God would speak to you. Well, Church, uh, so glad that you're here today. And uh, we're, into, uh, we're into January. How many of you uh, are like, I can't believe we're really like the first week's gone, you know. And uh, it's so quick and... Uh, uh, it's uh, so good to be with you. A lot of things uh, that are going on, and so uh, I want to highlight a few things uh, to you today. And uh, if you're new today, it's your first time here at Mountain Park, uh, here in the building or online, we just want to say welcome to you. And uh, we like to say this place is home, and so we're family. It's one of our culture values. We are family, and so we're just honored that you would join us today. Make sure you stop by our new here, Start Here tent. We have a little gift bag, goodie bag for you. We want to get that in your hands, and the team, we just want to shake your hands and say hi to you and, uh, and maybe get to hear a bit about your story. So make sure you stop here, stop by the New Year Start Here tent. Also, uh, for those of you today, if you, this is your first time today or if you've been coming for the past couple of weeks and you want to know more about Mountain Park, what we do is we, we do an, a little luncheon called Discover Mountain Park. And that is happening today at 12.15 p.m. after the second service. And uh, we, have, we have lunch provided for you. And so we want to get to know you. We want to answer any questions you, you have. We want to share a little bit more about this great church called Mountain Park and, and just, just fellowship. And, uh, and so you'll meet the staff, the different teams, and, and, and hear about all the great things. And so that's happening today, 12, 15 p.m. in the cafe area. And so we would love for you to, for, to join us uh, for that. Also, today is Baptism Orientation Class Day. And so uh, if you've never been water baptized, let me tell you something. It's one of the greatest things that you can do. In fact, Jesus himself modeled water baptism. And what is water baptism? It's let me say I'm laying down the old me. I'm rising up. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. And you're just declaring that statement. And so I want to encourage you that uh, if you've never been water baptized, or maybe you're just like, you know, Pastor, it's a, I, I just feel like God is doing so much in me. And I, I just want to do that again. It's, you know, I want to encourage you. Take that Take that next step. The class is today, 12, 15 p.m. upstairs in the great uh, room. And uh, a couple other things. Tonight is Envision, 4 p.m. And some of you might say, well, what is Envision? I've never been to Envision. Uh, a vision is an opportunity for you to hear from our board of servant leaders. Uh, and we highlight a ministry. Tonight, we're going to highlight uh, our adult ministry. And Pastor Jan will be sharing. I'll share some vision things. And, and then we have a time where we give you an update on finances and then take questions. And so if you have questions and, you know, I just have questions for the board or questions for you, Pastor Charlton, then tonight, 4 p.m. in Vision, we would love to have it. It's open to everybody, so uh, come out tonight. Uh, then tomorrow, uh, I've been encouraging all of us to do a 21-day either prayer or fast. And I love this because, you know, the best way to start your year off is to say, God, there's some things I want to cut out, some distractions I want to cut out, some temptations I want to cut out. And I just want to start and just take a moment to, to pray, to get closer. People ask me, Pastor, is fasting about losing weight? No. Might be a benefit. But you know what fasting does is it brings you closer to God. That's the goal. And so for some of you today, it might not be a fast in the sense of food. Maybe it's a prayer fast to say, you know what? I'm going to commit to 30 minutes a day, pray, every day for 21 days. I'm going to put it in my phone, and for 30 minutes, I'm going to separate myself, close the door, get in my closet, and for 30 days, 21, 21 days for 30 minutes, I'm going to pray. Maybe it's a social media fast. Some of you are like, Pastor, don't go there. Don't go there. I need my social, my social media fix. You know what my finger's going to do? <laughs> my wife's smiling at me right now. I know. Maybe it's... 21 days, no social media. Maybe it's TV. Maybe, I don't know what it is, but you know what? Whatever it is, it's unto the Lord. It's unto the Lord. God, I just wanna, I wanna worship. I wanna take a moment to be still. And so I wanna encourage you. We're gonna, we're gonna launch it tomorrow. And so hopefully that, that, that's something that you would kind of jump in. And uh, in our journal, uh, our rooted journal, I'll talk more about this this morning in the, in the message part. It talks about fasting. And so a lot of info uh, on that. And then parents, this week, Wednesday night, 6.30, parents rally. Uh, uh, 
uh, Colton and Jordan, our youth director and children's director, and myself, who would love to meet with parents. There's a lot of things we've been, been working on and still working on in our kids' ministry and our youth ministry. And, and so I know some parents have been emailing me questions and, hey, what's going on? And so this is a great time for you to come this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. We'd love to meet with you. And yes, yes, my heart, parents, just hear my heart. We want to partner with you in training your child the things of God. And so when parents partner with kids in youth ministry, God begins to do amazing things. So mark it on your calendar. Hope to see you parents uh, this weekend. Well, last weekend we launched our, our two-week series called Reset. And I love that because when we get to the beginning of New Year, the New Year's, we have all these resolutions and we're like, you know, 2023, praise God, 2022 is gone, you know. Some people do crazy things, you know, they'll burn their calendars, you know, they'll, you know, do all these weird things. Oh, it's gone, I'm so glad it's gone. 2023, it's gonna be better. But so often, we, we go through the same things. Because I believe that true change starts on the inside. True change starts on the inside. Last week, uh, I spoke to you, and if you missed it, I wanna encourage you to go online. Uh, I spoke to you about the helper. Jesus said to his disciples, to your advantage so that I go. So I'll send the helper, the Holy Spirit. And that when we come to faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit. And the word for helper is paraclete. It's from the word parakletos. Para being beside or alongside and kalin being the back part in the Greek of parakletos being called. See, Jesus said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit and he's called to come alongside you. And last week I spoke about four different ways or roles that the Holy Spirit plays in our, in our lives. But here's the deal. We have to invite the Holy Spirit to help us, to teach us, to convict us, to, to lead us, to give us understanding, to bring us truth. So last week we spoke about coming alongside the helper. Today, if you're taking notes, the title of, of my message is, Who Needs a Cup of Water? Who Needs a Cup of of water. Now, if you're American, it's wado. Who needs a cup of wado? I have an accent. Somebody, I like the way you say water. We should say that in America. Water. Yeah, all say it together. Water. So funny, I once went to a restaurant with my dad. First time he came, and my, my accent's changed. My dad's accent is so thick still, and some of you met, met him, and you look at him, you're like, I don't know what you're saying, but just smile, it's all good. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even understand his accent. But we went to a Chinese restaurant, and the guy said, what do you want to drink? My dad said, water. The guy looked at him. My dad said, water. The guy looked at him. What do you want to drink? Water. I said, Dad, it's water. Water. You can say water. He said, I want some water. Oh, you want water. <laughs> Who in your life needs a cup of water. I want to look today at the passage, if you take your notes, 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 13. And three of the 30 chief men went down and came about harvest time to David at the cave of Adullam. And when a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. So David is surrounded by this, he's, he's in this cave and he's surrounded, the enemy's all around and David was there in the stronghold and the garrison of the Philistines was there in Bethlehem and David said longingly, oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem that is by the gate. Now, I don't know if this water was almost like Fiji water. You know, Fiji water, when you go to Safeway, you're looking at like, you know, you can get Kirkland water or Crystal Clear, you know, you can get a bottle for like a buck 50 and then there's Fiji, it's $5. <laughs> and sometimes you're like, what's so magical about that water? Because it's like, you know, 500% markup. It's gotta be special water. I don't know if David in the moment was just there like, you know, oh, how I would love some Fiji water from the well of Bethlehem. He's in this moment. There must have been something great about this water or something great about this well that he's just longing, he's reflecting and, and he's thinking, man, I so I want this. This would be absolutely amazing. And then verse 16, and then three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and carried and brought it to David. And they... And then well, what happened is, but he would not drink it. He poured it out to the Lord and said, far be it from me, O Lord, that, that I should 
should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the man who went at to risk of their lives? Therefore, he would not drink it. These things, these are the things that the mighty man did. I, I like this story. David is reflecting. Oh, I'd love some Fiji water from the well of Bethlehem. Oh, that would be amazing. Three of his mighty men hear it, and what do they do? They literally go, hey, he needs the water. Let's go. And they bust through the army of the Philistines. And remember, Goliath was, the, was a Philistine giant. These are not just so-so warriors. These are some bad dudes that have encamped the city. They're around Bethlehem. They're, they're, they're ready to fight. They're looking, where's David? And, and so the three men have to fight their way through, sneak through battle to get to the well. And when they get to the well in Bethlehem, what do they do? They, they, they get some of the water and then they have to go back. Now they're gonna go back through the Philistines, fighting their way, taking this water all the way to David. And when they come before David, they give the water to him. And what does David do? Go, ah. Oh, at last, Fiji water from the well of Bethlehem. Oh, I just can't wait to taste it. No, what does David do? He pours it out. It's a couple of things in this passage I love. Number one, the, the, these three mighty men, what did they do? They heard the longing of David. Let me tell you something. Sometimes in life, we're so busy with our longings and our needs and our lives that we don't hear the needs of those around us. These three men were in a place and had the right heart to hear the longing of David. Let me ask you a question in your life. Are you hearing the needs of others? And what do these guys do? The second thing I like about these three mighty men is they, they had a can-do attitude. They didn't sit there and go, has David lost his mind? He needs to get off that Costco pizza. I'm telling you, man. He's losing it. Does he not understand there's a Philistine army? Doesn't he remember like, Goliath? What, what is wrong with him? Like, like we, we're hiding here. And he wants a glass of Fiji water from the wall of Bethlehem. He's, he's crazy. There's no way. I'm not going to die over a glass of water. No, they had a can-do attitude. Well, let's make it happen. Let's meet the need. And so they were willing to fight through armies and they were willing to pay a price even if it cost them their lives to meet that need. Let me ask you, are you willing to meet needs of others? You see, we can talk about Jesus all day long and how great church is, and we can talk, but let me tell you something. Jesus, Paul says this. He says, you gotta, you got to cruci be crucified in yourself. Jesus says, if you don't pick up your cross and follow me, we just sang about suffering. Even in suffering, God, it's worth it. But you know, sometimes as Christians, if we're honest with ourselves, we, well, I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I want to serve there. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to take that next step. It's just going to cost me time, Pastor. If you know my busy schedule, these three mighty men could have had so many excuses while they could not meet the need of David, the longing of David. But they said what? Can do attitude. We'll pay the price. We'll do whatever it is. It's not comfortable. We might lose our lives, but it's worth it. And then I love David. What does David do? David, you know, after they've gone and fought, what does David do? Does he go, eh, psh. No, no, he prays to God. And what does David do? He says, God, I can't drink this water. These guys were willing to give their life. You know what David was really saying? He was saying, I see your love for me. And I, in, in his appreciation, in his honor, he, he says, I can't, I can't drink this, guys. It's such a heavy price. It's such a sign of love and, and loyalty. You know, in life, here's the reality. In life, you're either gonna be David where you have needs in life. And guess what? You're gonna need some mighty men. You're gonna need some mighty woman to come around you in your life and to fight with you and walk with you and have a can-do attitude. You will make it. You're gonna get through this. Don't give up on your marriage. Keep pressing through. Don't give up on your kid. You lost your job. It's okay. God is provider. We are with you. The seasons in your life where you need some mighty man and mighty woman. And then there's the season in the life where you need to be a mighty man or a mighty woman for those in need. 
In life, it's, there's times where you need to be served, but there's times where you need to serve and come alongside others. So that's the truth about life. But let's, let's look really quickly about who were these mighty men. I, I, I was reading up on these guys and studying them a bit. The first guy, one of the first three was uh, uh, Josheb, Bashebeth. And listen to this guy. This guy was a guy who raised his spear against 800 men whom he killed in one encounter. That's a bad dude right there. <laughs> he took on and took out 800 men. Men. The second guy, Eleazar, he was with David when they taunted the Philistines uh, at Pas Damin. And then the Israelites began to retreat, but Eleazar stood his ground and struck down the Philistines till his hands grew tired. And it literally says his hand almost froze to his sword. And the Lord brought about a great victory that day. The troops returned to Eleazar, but only to strip the dead. Think about this. They're in the battle. Eleazar's there. Israel's like, you know what? We're getting tired. Let's retreat. It's not worth it. They begin to back down. Eleazar says, see you later, guys. I've got to handle some stuff. I ain't backing down. And he, he literally fights so much that he, he, he's clenching at the end. He's cl- he can't let go of his sword. And he takes them all out. And then Israel c- comes back. Eleazar, what are you up to? I, I just took them all out. Okay, let's get the spoils of your battle. Joe, the first guy, fought 800. Eliezer, when everybody bounced to go get a cappuccino, he stayed in the fight. Third guy, let's read about the third guy, Shama. When the Philistines banded together at a place where there was a field full of lentils, Israel troops fled from there. But Shama took his stand in the middle of the field and he defended and struck the Philistines down and the Lord brought about a great victory. What was going on here? There was a field with lentils and that was, that was, that was Israel's, that was their territory, their ground. And they're in a fight with the Philistines and they're beginning to lose. And what do the Israelites do? The army, they begin to run. What does Shammah do? He says, you know what? I will not be moved. You will not get in this ground. And he took out that whole army. One guy took out that whole army. And then Israel came back. He stood his ground. He literally said this, enemy, this is not for you. Let me ask you in your life, do you have a mighty, do you have mighty men? Come on, do you have some mighty woman? Do you have, ladies, do you have some mighty woman in your life? That when the battle is on in your life, let me tell you something. Paul says this in Ephesians chapter six. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus was clear. Paul was clear. You're in a battle. Maybe right now you don't feel like you're in a battle, but let me tell you something. You're gonna be in some battles. Do you have some mighty men? Do you have some mighty women? You see, you know what I like about these three warriors is as we read about them, they've got a great resume. I took out 800. Oh, wow, when everybody bailed, I stayed. When they wanted that piece of ground, I hunkered down, baby, you're not getting it. That's my resume. These three men had resumes, they had legacies. Everybody spoke about them. And what did David say? Oh, if I could just get some water, from the well of Bethlehem. These three men could have said, you know what? Get your own water. Do you know who I am? I defeated 800 men and you want me to get you some water. Oh, I stood when the ground, when everybody bailed, David, I stood there. I was faithful. Come on, haven't you seen what I've done? Haven't you seen my walk with God? Haven't you seen how spiritual, how favored I am? No, 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 no. You know what? These three mighty men in the midst of their growth, in the midst of their greatness, you know what? They were still willing to serve. Yes. You know what? This is, I want to I clarify this. You know what spiritual, spiritual maturity is? Spiritual maturity is the ability to put others first. Spiritual maturity is the ability to serve. That's why Jesus said, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. 
these mighty men threw their legacy and their resumes out the way and said, what do you need? How can we make it happen? Let me ask you a question. Do you have mighty men or mighty women in your life? Because the battle's gonna come. And then do you have the heart to be a mighty man for another brother, to be a mighty woman for another sister? Because life is better together. In fact, Paul says in, in Corinthians, he, he, he says to us uh, that we are in 1 Corinthians 12, that we are the body of Christ, members individually, but we're a body. I like to say we're a family. And you know what good family does? Family takes care of family. Family stands together because we are better together. You know, Jesus says this in John 15, verse 12 to 17. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. He didn't say, hey, here's a great thought for you. Please, think about this. Would you love others as I love you? No, he said this. This is a commandment I give you. An order. An instruction. Well, pastor, what is God wanting me to do? I don't know what God wants to, me to do in my life. I can tell you, love people. Well, love Christians? No, 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 no. Love everybody. Quit judging them. Quit labeling them. Quit putting them in categories. Well, they don't believe what I believe. You can still love them. You don't have to agree with everything. My wife and I don't agree on everything. But I still love her. Well, you have to. No, 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 no. I want to love her. There's times where I feel like I don't. But Jesus said, let's read the next verse before I give it away. What did he say? Greater love is what? No one than this. To what? Lay down his life. Sometimes with my wife, I'm like, I, I don't feel like loving you right now. Charlton, will you lay down your life? I love you. <laughs> what about your neighbor? What about your colleague? What about that person that gossips with you about you at work? What about that email you got, that text message, that social media post? What about that person that keeps persecuting you because you're a Christian? Jesus said what? Lay down your life. Lay down your life. What is he saying? Come on, be a mighty man of God. Be a mighty woman of God. It's not about me. It's not about what I've been through. It's not about my resume, my successes. It's not even about my failures. It's all about what can I do for you? Because we're in a body and we're in a family called the church. You need mighty men, and some people need you to step up and be there, mighty woman of God. He says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for servants does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. Listen to verse 16. You did not choose me. Oh, come on. Can we just stop there for a minute? Aren't you glad that he chose you? Yeah. Aren't you glad that in the midst of your sin and your craziness and some of you in this room when you would get down in the club and party and shoot that and snort that, he still chose you? Yes. He still chose you? Yes. In the midst of all the sin and darkness and all the junk you did, he still chose you, my friend. He says this, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Well, pastor, how do you know that? Because he went to the cross for you. When he hung on the cross, he chose you. Yes. He chose you. He chose me. He gave his life. And I, pointed, and I appointed you to do what? To go and bear fruit, your fruit, uh, and that your fruit should abide. And so that whatever you ask in my name, he may give to you. These things I command you so that you must watch, so that you will love one another. You see, Jesus is drilling down here over and over and saying, come on, love others. Well, pastor, I love everybody. Let me tell you something about love. Love is a verb. It's an action. Who are you laying your life down for is what Jesus is saying. Who are you being a mighty man for or a mighty woman of God for? Who, somebody in your life needs a cup of water. Or maybe today you need a cup of water in your life. You're like, Pastor, I feel so dry on the inside. I feel like my life is chaotic and crazy. And let me tell you something. That's why today is group up Sunday. Get the camera on it. <laughs> why, why is grouping up so important? Just so we can say, hey, we're a church that has 70 groups that meet. Look at us. We're so awesome. No, because you need some mighty men. Come on, brothers. There's some of you brothers that are in the battle right now. You're in the pit. You're in the darkness. 
God, where are you? He has put mighty men in this church that I want to walk with you. But you've got to take that step of grouping up today. You've got to say, you know what, devil? Enough is enough. Hey, I've got some brothers that are going to get around me. I've got a band of brothers that are going to stand with me. You know what? I'm going to get out of this addiction. I'm going to get out of this pornography. I'm going to get out of this darkness. And I'm going to come and I'm going to be everything that God has called me to be. Because the Bible says this. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. He's done all he can do. But if, but if you're going to keep on hanging with the guys when you say, oh, if I could just get a cup of water. If you're going to keep on hanging with turkeys, they're like, bro, get your own water. Yeah. Fix your own stuff. I don't need to know about what you're going through. I got my own issues. So get your own box of tissues. <laughs> no, no, no. You need some mighty men. How can I come alongside you? Let's fight them together. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to text you. I'm going to walk with you. You are not alone in this battle. Come on, ladies. There's some of you ladies that you're just carrying stuff. Get some sisters. Get some woman of God in your life. That's why you've got to take that step. I'm, I'm tired of living with these chains. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. But you've got to take that next step and say, I need a mighty, I need some mighty woman of God to get around me. Some of you couples need to get some mighty. That's why we have marriage Mondays. Why? Just because we want to expose how bad your marriage is? No. Because we want to get couples that have fought the fight themselves and have come on the other side. They can say to you, there's hope today. There's victory today. You don't have to live in a, in a bad, I was going to say another word, marriage. You can have a blessed and abundant marriage. But you need some people to fight for you and fight with you. Even as a pastor in my life, I am so grateful in my life how God has put mighty men with me. That in, when I've been in the fight, there's times where I'm like, oh, would, if I could just get a cup of water, if I could just get a breakthrough, if I could just, I don't think I could make it. I think I should quit ministry. I think I'm not good enough. All the insecurities, because the enemy is going to hit your insecurities. This is what he's going to do. But then I have some mighty men that come and say, God has called you, brother. You're going to get to the other side. If I have to carry you and drag you, the four guys carried their friend on a mat. If I have to carry you on a mat, I'm going to carry you on a mat. But you're going to get your breakthrough. You are not alone. I'm so grateful. I would not be here today if it wasn't for some of the mighty men God has put in my life. And you know what's so exciting? Being here at Mountain Park now? Yeah, in this church, God is beginning to put some mighty men around me in this church. He's adding more brothers that are saying, hey, brother, I'm in the fight with you. Yes. And I'm saying, you know what? I'm in the fight with you. Group up is so important. But well, why? Why should I group up? Let me give you three things as we land the plane. Number one, we do life together. We are better together. Deuteronomy chapter 32, uh, verse, verse 30 says this. One will chase a thousand, two, ten thousand. The Lord is their rock. You see what's so amazing? You're trying to fight the enemy by yourself. Get some mighty woman of God in your life, sister. And when you get one, now there's one, now there's two. One will chase a thousand. Two, ten thousand. Well, do the math. How many does three chase? A hundred thousand. Well, how many does four chase? A million. The odds are looking really good. I can get through this. You know what, you know what Deuteronomy 32 is saying? When we stand together, there's synergy of faith. We, our God is going to get us through this. Who's standing with you? Who's doing life with you? Well, pastor, I'm afraid if they get to see my life looks so perfect on the outside, on the inside, it's a train wreck. What if they see it? And what if they, what if they, what if they? Let me tell you something. Let's be honest. The Bible says this. Every single one of us in this room and online have missed God's mark. There's not one of us that can say, hey, look at me. Go open your Bible. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. There's not one of us in this room that can say, we got it all put together. We all need Jesus. We all struggle with sin. We all face temptation. Our marriages go through things. Life happens. Jesus said this, John 16, 33. I almost put this in every sermon. In this world, you will face what? Trials, tribulations, storm, 
heartache, pain, disappointment, rejection, all of it. And Jesus said what? He said, you're gonna face it in this world, but you can overcome, why? Because I'm with you. Well, how is he with us? One of the ways, his family, his body. See, if you're doing life by yourself as a Christian, I'm gonna tell you this. You're trying to chase everything that's coming against you. You need some mighty man or woman. One will chase a thousand, two, ten thousand, three, a hundred thousand, four million. You get a lot stronger when you put the right people in your life. That's why group up's so important. Doing life together. Second thing is we learn together. We learn together. When we get in our groups, you know what we do? We go deeper. We learn. You know, on Sunday, all you're doing is listening to this short guy with an accent. And I can give you so much, but it's a one-way conversation we're having right now. But when you get into groups, you begin to talk to people about, can I talk about something Pastor Charlton said? Or, hey, can I talk about this? Now you're having dialogue, and you see growth really happens. Growth, on Sunday, it's high level, but when you get into groups, you can talk about real issues and real things that pertain to where you're at. I'm just throwing out seeds now, but when you get into groups and different groups in life, you, that's where you grow. That's where you learn together. And point number three is uh, we grow together. So we do life together, we learn together, but then we grow together. Yeah. We are better. I'm so, I, I would not be today where I am if it wasn't for people that came alongside me and I, I grew with. Even to this day, there, there's some people in this church and I love to just, I'm talking like, you know, theology and scripture and, and, and some of us have different views, but it's okay. We're learning and growing because here's one thing. We don't, we, we, we have to grow in the mind of Christ. We have to grow in understanding. The Holy Spirit opens our eyes. I don't, I don't know everything. I'm still growing. One of my mentors told me this, Charlton, the day you stop growing is the day you stop living. We gotta grow together. So I'm gonna encourage you today. It's time to group up. It's time to get some mighty men of God in your life. Ladies, it's time to get some mighty woman. It's time for you to be a mighty man, a mighty warrior for another brother. Well, pastor, I don't even know how to pray with people. You know what? You know, just love them. Hey, I'm here for you. P.S., I don't even know what that means. But I'm here for you. You know, there's a great quote, and it's, it's an anonymous quote, but show me your friends. I'll show you your future. Sometimes if you play back the tape of your life, you'll realize this. Maybe the reason my life is not where it should be is because I've had the wrong people in my life. Well, pastor, you're telling me I need to cut out all my friends? No, 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 no. I'm just saying maybe what's missing in your life is some mighty man, some mighty woman of God. Maybe if you begin to change and evaluate and see, I need some people that are gonna help me to grow in becoming who God called me to be. I need some people that are gonna teach me the word of God, teach me truth, about my life. And these are people that are gonna make me become everything God's called me to be. Someone needs your help in there's seasons where you need others' help. Life is better together. We are family at Mountain Park Church. So really quickly, I'm gonna run through some groups. And at Mountain Park, we have two kinds of groups. We have focus groups, and we have community groups. Spoke, spoke focus groups are very specific groups. Specific content, specific area. Community groups are like Bible study groups. We have community groups that meet at coffee shops. We have community groups that meet, some, some meet here on different nights of the day. Some, we've got a com community groups. I'm so excited that uh, for those of you moms that are out there and, and uh, during the day, you, you know, you're a stay-at-home mom or maybe you have your own business and you have free time, we're going to have a Wednesday morning here, uh, we're going to open up a study for women to come. Just come in and study the Word of God together on a Wednesday morning. We have a men's group, I believe, Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. They show up here at church. They keep inviting me. I'm like, change the time. <laughs> Proverbs says it's foolish to get up early. It's in the Bible. It's in Proverbs. And they're, they're praying for me. I, I will show up one day. Keep praying. The Lord will convict me. He'll get me there. 
But we have groups that meet all over, community Bible study groups. But focus groups, we have Alpha. Alpha is a focus group. You say, what is Alpha? If you're here today and you do not know much about Jesus, you're not even sure if you're going to heaven. You don't even know about, how do I know? I'm saying, how do I know I'm forgiven? How do I get the sin and shame? Alpha's for you, my friend. Alpha's gonna help you get a foundation. We sang today about the Christ, the foundation, that when the wind and storm, I know, I have a foundation, Jesus. Alpha's for you. You gotta know about, how, what, why the Bible? How do I pray? Alpha is for you. Then we, we have... Um, uh, hope men's group. Come on, brothers. There's some of you brothers. If, you, if you're struggling with addiction or anger, lust, and, and, and there's just hurt, tra- trauma, traumatic experiences, brothers, Tuesday night, we have hope for you. Some mighty men that'll get around you and say, hey, you're not alone. Let's go through this together. We've got a support group. We've got divorce care and grief share and just groups that come alongside you. Financial Peace University. Some of you today, you're like, Pastor, I just, I'm just bombarded by the debtors and I just don't know how to steward my money. We just had a group go through Financial Peace University. It was amazing to hear the stories of people getting out of debt and getting into savings, just getting a plan, a biblical plan for money, Financial Peace University. We have Marriage Mondays and there's so much on Marriage Mondays. You wanna get married, Marriage Mondays, they have a class for that. Step Families, got a class for that. Reengage. There's so much in Marriage Mondays, and here's the good news. Come on. You might say, well, my marriage is okay. Are you fine with an okay marriage? These are all kinds of focus groups, and after service, when you head out, if you go through the door and to, to the left, there's going to be some of the support groups there, Financial Peace and Alpha and that, Marriage Mondays, I believe, is at the white marble table, is that correct? You guys are there. If you want to know more about the marriage groups and how to get plugged in, that's there for you. Financial Peace is there for you. But then, we also have today community groups, so if you want to find a Bible study group, we're getting ready. Next Sunday, I'm going to launch our next 10-week series. It's actually three teaching series in 10 weeks. And we've got a a participant's journal for you and we've got groups that are ready for you that you literally can take. What I'm teaching on for the next 10 weeks, starting starting on Sunday, next Sunday, what I'm teaching, you can go into groups. You can can do a devotional on it and there's questions in your group and you can go deeper with what we're talking about Sunday. And here's the deal, this is beautiful. I'm only asking you to commit for 10 weeks, that's it. At the end of 10 weeks, you're done. If you want to go into another group, we then we have just open groups. You want to go, great. If you're like, I'm done for 10 weeks, and then in August, end of August, September, we're going to launch another 10 weeks. So I'm not asking you to sign up for a whole year. I'm just saying 10 weeks. 10 weeks. Can you invest into yourself for 10 weeks? And so we have groups in homes and all over. You know, Empty Nester's group is about to meet right after this service. And, and they meet at a home and eat food. It's amazing. I went to Christmas dinner with them. Great food. There's an Empty Nester's group. There's men's groups. But then, yes, something new we're going to be launching. Yeah, on Wednesday night. We're going to launch midweek, January the 18th. Because for some of you, are like, you're telling me to show up with strangers in a house What's up in that house? What if there's a dog in that house? I'm allergic to cats. I've heard it all. I get it. Come Wednesday night, we're going to have two worship songs, a 10-minute recap of the topic for the week, and then we're going to have women's groups upstairs, up on the roof area with heaters, men's groups around tables, couples groups in the youth room. So we've got couples, men's, and women's groups. What am I saying to you? There's a group for you. There's a group waiting. There's a chair with your name on it. Will you take your next step? Will you take your next step? Because if you want this year to be different, you need the right people in your life. God saved you. If you're a Christian, you're in a body. Body needs you. We need each other. The enemy's real. You might be very comfortable right now. The enemy's real. Jesus said he's real. Apostle Paul said he's real. Who's standing with you? Who's standing with you, my friend? Who's standing with you? Let's pray today. Father, I just thank you today. Would you just speak to our hearts? We need people in our lives and people need us in theirs. Life is better together.
We are family. Maybe for some of us, it's the first time even considering. It's the first time even saying, okay, let me sign up for a group. But Lord, I know the benefit of it. I know the joy, the peace to know that I'm not alone. So for you to speak to us today, Lord. Give us the courage and the faith to take that next step. Lord, for some of us, it's time to come out of darkness and to step into your light. Maybe it's time to go to Alpha. Maybe it's time to go to Marriage Monday. Maybe it's time to show up at Hope. It's, Lord, we've been held back too long. But your promise, Jesus, it is for freedom that you came. You came in John 10 to give us life and life overflowing. So give us the courage today. Guide us to the right group. Put some mighty men, some mighty women, some mighty couples in our lives so we can grow together, learn together, do life together. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.